<laughs> Fun fact. Yeah, yeah. I, even, I, don't, I don't know how many of those I had when I was tuning. <laughs> so, um, have you guys ever <clears throat> squared up your knock ends on your arrows? Mm-hmm. There's a, I mean, it's just a rudimentary tool. It's just two little V notches and a flat piece with a piece of sandpaper on the end of it at 90 degrees. And you put your arrow in there and you just roll it and it sands down your knock in and it squares it because your knock in isn't square. It actually will yeah. cause arrow flight to change. Really? Yep. So that might, might be why you had to knock tune a lot of your arrows because your knock ends might not be square and it's putting pressure on that back of that shaft just a little awkward and just a different and you're just yeah, you're finding you have that sweet spot. Yeah. You know what? Because I've got arrows from the factory. Or longer. Yeah, which, which makes a lot of sense, sense when all your weight is up front and you got something in the yeah. back. Yeah. If you got something in the back, you know, you want this straight block to come on this flat plate, mm-hmm. but it's kicking like that, it's going to want to dip off. Yeah. That's yeah. where you get a lot of tuning issues. I've had arrows from the factory coming. You can tell those knock-ins are not straight at all. Yeah. There's, yeah. If like you put a knock-in, you can visibly see a gap on one side. You're like, okay. Yeah. So we, we spent the money the past couple of years and bought serious archery arrows. Those things come out of the box. Perfect. Those are good arrows. I've heard, I've heard, I've never shot them, but I've heard a lot of good yeah. things about it them. It makes you really sad when you hit the fence. Yeah. What <laughs> arrows are you talking about? Uh, serious archery. They're, they're expensive. They are worth the money, but if, if you're uh, a newer archer, which she's been, she's been through quite a few just because, and myself also, I broke four arrows last year hunting. Um, it hurts. It hurts the pocket because oh, yeah. it's it's thirty bucks an arrow. Oh yeah, once you start diving into like good arrows, like because yeah. I shot um, gold tip, especially, hunter, and sorry, sorry. I, I shot gold tip hunter pros. Which are crazy expensive. They're, yeah, I had that you, one year. you're paying about you know 120 to 150 bucks. Yeah, yeah. And, and then if you start putting on like Dane has, where you got a yeah, you got two hundred weight up extra front, weights and, and yeah, yeah. Then now yeah, you're running into some yeah, you're running into some serious coin per arrow. So yeah, it hurts. It, it hurts when you break or lose an arrow. Yeah, it makes you really really cautious on that shot. Mm-hmm. What um, type of release are you guys shooting? I used to shoot a thumb button thumb release. That's what I'm thinking about switching to. It's a it's a learning curve. Yeah. It's because weird. your anchor point, it feels like I mean, the first time you shoot it, man, you feel like you're two inches short in your draw yeah. line because yeah. you're used to your hand being way back here. Now you're up tight. Yeah. It's really hard to get used to. I found out I was more accurate in a controlled environment, like you're shooting in the yard. Right. Um, but different un- in a under situation. pressure, I would punch it. Yeah. And I I learned I hit I shot two deer with that release. Both deer I hit very far forward. Luckily, I found both of them. And I was like, why am I, I shoot this thing so good in the yard? And I was like, you know yeah. what? I was in shooting one day and I just punched that release just like, just like how I would. That's and what, my mm-hmm. arrow went about six to eight inches yeah. to the right. I was like, that's why. So I switched yeah. back to an index finger. I went to a, uh, a stand and uh, that was, it was, it's yeah, a nice release. Yeah, yeah, those are good. Um, that's another thing a lot of guys like, you don't need to buy the two hundred and fifty dollar release, but like you will see a difference. Oh yeah, yeah. From buying the nineteen ninety nine Walmart release to buying like a, a yeah. good brand name reputable. Yeah, yeah. I'm I I struggle with uh, target panic pretty bad. Yeah. Twenty to thirty, I'm I can hit yeah. anything. When I started hitting that forty fifty yeah, yard I mark, 40, man, 50, I would, and I am just like this man, and I am like oh yeah, and I just. I have just your standard, I have a Scott Shark, just your standard index finger, and I will just be like this, and I'm like, uh, and I wait for it to hit, and boom, I just pull. Yep. I mean, I, I don't pull, I just squeeze the trigger. And, and you're doing <clears throat> yes. wrist release? Okay. Yep, a wrist strap, just a, a standard, and I was talking to my buddy at work, and he was telling me about, he gave me his release to try, I haven't shot it yet, he gave me his uh, thumb release. And he gave me another one, which it is a wrist strap style, but it's the way he was explaining it was it's like half type, like a back tension, like you're supposed to pull through it. Yeah. So I never did shoot his uh, thumb release that he gave me, and that's his release. So I only had it for two days. <coughs> never shot. I was just too busy. Yeah. Well, today at work, he strung up some wire, and we had we had that release at work and he strung up just like a rope of wire and he hooked it on there and he hooked it through my thumb and he was showing me how to do it and he was talking about how guys do what you did on that deer and yeah. he's like they just wanted you just yeah he, he said a lot of people want to just 
do this. I learned that you kind of got to roll. Yes, you got to roll your me. roll your hand yeah, back you, into that trigger. You just like put a little pressure on that, and you just kind of roll back. Yep. And he's like, "That's how you're supposed to shoot these," huh. and it felt amazing. Really, it's but a nice was, clean break. Yeah, he's he's a really good. He's really big into bows. He's a really good shot. And he was telling me, he's like, "Think about it, man." He's like, "If you if you have either whether it's a thumb release or even this, he's like, if you if you punch that and your finger is not perfectly in line and you just do this or this, mm -hmm. he's like, at forty yards, your it's, arrow it's is change. six to eight inches off. It's gonna change, you yep. know? Yeah." And that, he, so he, I was telling him about how I had the issues with target panic, and he doesn't like back tensions for um, hunting purposes. Yeah, I agree with that. But he said that thumb release. He was telling me how you, if if you do it right, you can you work just, it like a back. You tension. just roll through it, and he's like, and it, you should never move. It shouldn't move this mm -hmm. way. Oh, it sounds so like I'm thinking, thinking about something new next year. I said yeah, I just I learned like I held my mine had the pinky. A lot of guys don't run a pinky slot. They'll just do their three yeah. fingers and then their thumb. I had a pinky. I would hard, I would never touch it until I was ready, and then I would just use that pinky to start the roll. Yeah. I would try to keep my thumb locked in place, and I would just pop it off. Mm -hmm. And I could shoot it really good. But like you said, target panic. Oh, okay, full draw. There it is. Mm -hmm. 20 yards, bang. Yeah. I never... I never thought the process yeah. all the way through, so I struggled with it. So I went back to a, an index finger. Hmm. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna give it. I know that it's extremely late, um, but I think I'm gonna give it a shot this year. He was showing me 26 days, buddy. Yeah, he was showing me a few. He has the. He's this big in the hunt, and he's got the at work. He's got the 2023 and the 2024 Lancaster Archery Supply books, and <laughs> good for him. He, yeah, he gave me last year's model, and I was looking through it. And he's. I think I'm gonna buy one of the True Ball ones and give it a shot. True um, balls, yeah, they make they make a nice yeah, release. I shot a true ball. He said that stands really stands stands makes are, yeah. really good ones too. Stan makes really good ones. Oh. I shot a true ball fang for quite a few years, yeah. which was like their updated short and sweet that everybody yeah. loves. They just I, had a new sleeker design to it, and it was a little yeah. bit red. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try it though. Honestly, I, when just just holding that piece of wire mm -hmm. and pretending like I'm holding a bowstring, you know, and and being able to just roll through that, like he told me. It, it felt so much better because yeah I feel like you get on there and you're you're so focused on just continuing that pool that I wouldn't be I wouldn't you're not do, focusing I on your I shake hope, or your motion you're focused shot it, on that pole yeah. I haven't shot it yet to experience it but he said that it would help me a lot and huh. he said the other thing I need to do is like that they call it like blind bail shooting or whatever where take either take your sight off or just cover it with tape and don't look and you just shoot from like eight eight feet and you're just you you just practice with whatever release you have on working through that whether even if you have a, a finger trigger yeah. you just instead of worrying about where you're aiming you were just focusing on that slow pull or if it's a back tension or a thumb release and just pulling through which makes a lot of sense <clears throat> with nick you being a great marksman like that trigger pull is everything mm -hmm. That's that's the reason why the release yeah. that I use is indexed, just because yeah. you're used to it. And you're used to pulling second the trigger. Nature. Yeah, a gun trigger, so second nature to me. That's why when I tried one of your thumb releases, I was just I tried it twice and I was like, uh, -uh. yeah, no, nope. yeah. <clears throat> not for it's, me. It's different. It's very that and like I'm used to having like my wrist here. So having my hand like this, I was yeah. like, mm, no. see, to me that was this is always more natural than having. Yeah, everything like that. This felt more comfortable. I can get into a if I'm in a compact spot like up against the tree. It's yeah. easier to tuck that arm Move in, arm a little bit, and still kind of get yeah. in a good position and trying to have your arm fully extended with your hand. Trying to do that, it's difficult. That's yeah. where that trigger pull you were talking about mm -hmm. yeah. really goes into effect. Yeah. So I started doing something real different this year with the new bow. Is I, I've always used my thumb. As, as a pressure point because it can only pull so much until it hurts and then have that behind my jaw which I know a lot of guys say don't because your jaw moves your, your ear doesn't but I've always used my jaw what I started doing this year with the new bow is I've been turning with my finger release turning it to the side I've, I've been using the C of my index finger and my thumb kind of cupping cut my, 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 my jaw and mm -hmm. I, I, know, I know exactly where, where that's at. I'm so used to using my jaw. I learned a bad habit right off the rip and, right. and now I'm just kind of married to it at, at, at this point. But I, I noticed my grouping going from 30 yards here to hitting the dot pretty much I respectably 75, 80% of the time. Yeah. 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 I mean, you got to do whatever. I mean, like, in, at the end of the day, I mean, 
you're talking about bad habits, but like, okay, we're not trying to hit, you know, a 300 X score out in the deer woods. Right. Yeah. Like I said, we're trying to hit something the yeah. size of a pie plate. So, yeah. And like, I don't care how good of an art you are. If you have target panic in the heat of the moment, you got a nice deer in front of you, you're excited. Yeah. I don't ever remember thinking about the shot process as, unless I'm, no, I gotta be really, I don't. yeah. You're just like, oh, I've got to shoot that deer. Yep. So like, yeah, I mean, like I could have a death, for all I know, I got a death grip on the front of that bow and I'm yep. punching that trigger every yeah. time. It's, I don't I remember. Th it's I tricky. I think that's mm -hmm. where that back tension type would slow you down enough to be like, okay, I have to work. I have to work through this and yeah, I have to make sure I'm there and then I'll, I'll pull through. Yep. I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot. I hope it works out. Yeah, so Shout out to you, Jake, if it does work out and I shoot a lot better. <laughs> I hope it does. Um, you guys want to add something more difficult and toss cameras in the tree with you? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't help, I can tell you that. Yeah, I bet it doesn't. I will say I wish I had a camera last year when I shot that buck because I wouldn't have waited four hours <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. find him. Well, I, yes and no. Yeah. Like, like we, yeah. We've killed deer, um, I can think of two specifically, that we've killed deer immediately, like dead within five minutes of, of the shot and then watch it on camera and then second guess ourselves. But that, that, that's again, you're going back to the camera because this doesn't register all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's tricky. Oh, that's my biggest problem is not slowing down in the moment. Is I just I'm like I see hair and boom I just yep. I just I don't want to be at full draw for a minute on yeah. a deer I want to be at full draw for a second yeah. if I can yeah. yeah as quick as possible yeah so when when you guys are, are watching the deer I'm much better at it with the firearm during gun season um, that that shift of broadside quartering to quarter, mm -hmm. quartering away how heavy are you watching that with with the bow in your hand. I'm a lot better with a gun. I always, really? I yeah. always pay attention to yeah. the quarter. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, like you know the golden rule: aim where you want your arrow to exit. Yeah, that's the golden rule. Yes. You know, like that's what he taught me when I first started. Yeah. But the one thing that took me a long time <clears throat> to get used to was also the upward angle. Yes. Oh, that messed me up yeah. in the very beginning. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that deer's 20 yards and it's quartering away, and you know right where you want to tuck it when you shot all summer when you're sitting on the ground. Yeah. But now you're. 15, 20 foot up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you've got to compensate for that angle. Yeah. It took me a little bit to, okay, now I, now I,